at the dedication of the bishop and his wife's grandson. Amen. I believe the hand of the Lord is upon him and the parents and the grandparents and all of you. Amen. God's good all the time. For the sound men, that video we were going to show, we're going to just hold it for tomorrow, uh, tonight. Is that all right? Praise God. You don't want to miss tonight. Something might just happen. Thank you for that rousing response. Something just might happen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, this is a great church. If Sister Mowry and I lived in Norfolk, this is right where we'd be. That's the truth. This church didn't get here just by somebody snapping their fingers and saying, let there be church. Amen. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears have gone into the, to where this church is right now. Sister Mallory and I travel all over the country. We've been in every state in the United States. We've been in every province in Canada except one. We've been in five continents. We've, uh, we've sat on the front row of great revivals. We thank God for that. But I will tell you from experience, I know a good church when I see it. And when we walk into it, this is not just a, a shallow, casual kind of church. This is a church with depth. This is your church been taught right. Amen. This is a church that believes something, stands for something. And it didn't all just happen. Everything rises and falls on the shoulders of leadership. God's given you a great bishop and his wife, pastor. And uh, I honor this great man of God. Brother Blankenship, we love you and appreciate you. Appreciate the friendship we've developed over the years. And I'm going to tell you, this church is in a great place to go to the next dimension and the next level of revival. I believe it. I see it. I feel it. It's your day. Praise God. God good or what? Praise God. All right. I'm going to talk to you for just a few minutes before somebody's fried chicken clock goes off. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Psalms 14. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. You know, you've got to be a fool to say there's no God. You look around and see everything, see all the universe. There ain't no God. Wow, I'm glad I believe in God. Because the people that don't believe God, they're corrupt. They have done abominable works. You can see that all around. People don't believe God. Just look at that. There is none that doeth good. Those that don't believe in God. And then you can read the rest of all of this. Seven verse, oh, the salvation, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. When the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. And then you turn over to the 53rd chapter of Psalms, and it's like deja vu. You're reading it all over again. Must be important, because it got in here twice, just about verbatim. 14th chapter, we read the fool in his heart has said there is no God. In the 53rd chapter, we read the fool has said in his heart there is no God. And then here they are again, corrupt. They are abominable. Iniquity. None that doeth good. Huh? And then the 6th verse, Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. When God bringeth back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Praise God. You know, you got to tack a title usually on something you talk about. So I guess, why don't we just say, our God is bigger than all our problems. Our God is bigger 
Then all our problems. Anybody here got a problem? Would you look at your neighbor and say, you got a problem? Our God's bigger than that problem. Oh, hallelujah. I believe we got some people here believe that. My God is bigger than all our problems. I kind of like that. Sounds a little elementary, but it's true. My God is bigger than all our problems. Praise God. Clap to the Lord one time. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. You know, I was, thank you, sis. Wow, there ain't nothing like water. Ooh, wow. The Lord made that H2O. He did. That didn't just happen. You know, that's what the, that's what the world would like you to believe. This water just happened. H2O. Everything comes out of H2O. Did you know that? Thank you for that rousing response. You know, when I was a little kid, I was nine years old, I was in a junior Sunday school class. Can you imagine? I had a lady teacher, and she's handling all these nine-year-old, eight- and nine-year-old boys. And, uh, boy, you got to be something to be able to teach wiggle worm kids like that. And uh, our teacher, her name was Isla Welch. Now, Isla Welch it had polio. When she was younger, so she walked with uh, two canes like this, braces on both feet. And she come in there. I was our teacher. Isla was the most incredible teacher. She had this uh, voice inflection. When she, when she would speak, she'd just captivate you. And she had gl thick glasses that made her eyes look twice their normal size. So she'd look at you with those big eyes. And then she, this one class, I'll never forget it. She's looking at us boys with that inflection in her voice. She said, boys, our God is eternal. Wow, I never heard that word. I put my hand up. Yes, Gordy, what is it? I said, what does eternal mean? She said, well, eternal means no beginning and no ending. I says, wow, no beginning and no ending. You know what nine-year-old kid understands? No beginning and no ending. That upset my apple cart big time. I said, my God, there's got to have a beginning. We're finite. Everything has a beginning. So I go back home and I start thinking about it. No beginning and no ending. And you go in your little mind back, you know, billions and billions and billions, yea, trillions of years, saith the Lord, and you try to find the beginning of God. You can't find his beginning because God never had a beginning. You know, finite people have a hard time understanding that. Can you just think about it a minute? No beginning. Billions, trillions, you can't even say year because it, it doesn't even equate. Because there's no beginning. And then you turn around and you look in the other direction. Try to find the ending of God. The ending of eternity. There's no ending. It's forever. It's infinity, man. No beginning. And no ending. The God that I serve had no beginning and no ending. I don't know how that makes you feel, but that makes, you feel, that makes me feel mighty secure to know that I serve the God that has no beginning and no ending. Hallelujah. Are you glad you serve that God? Huh. Well, and then to prove it a little bit more, I had a friend. His name was Roger. Roger was in that same class. And so it wasn't too long later, we were at Roger's house. They had a big old farm, and, and uh, we had lots of food and good things to eat and fellowship. And so after the meal, Roger and I are out on the, 
they had this lush green uh, lawn outside their house. And it was so beautiful. And it was a clear, cloudless night. And the fireflies are flying around. You know, I never could figure out how they lit up their tails like that. You know, awesome. And we're laying out there on our backs on that lush green grass. And we're looking up into the sky and we're seeing stars. And Roger and I are talking. You know, Isla said that there's no beginning and no ending. Roger, you see that, that star up there? Yeah? How far you reckon that star is? He said, well, I, Roger said, I think it's at least 100 miles. I said, yeah, it's, those stars are so bright, it looks like we could just reach up and pluck them out of the sky. Wow. <laughs> so, and then, hey, Roger, how many stars you reckon are up there? <laughs> wow. Roger says, I, I reckon at least 100. I mean, he was into hundreds. And so we, in our little childish way, I'll never forget it, I, we're just kind of boys, you know, and I, I said, hey, Roger, Let's make a line in the sky. I'll take that side. You take this side. And let's count them. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. It wasn't too long before Roger said, Hey, Gordy, this is hard. Only the ones that we could see. Wow. So my question here is, how high is high? How wide is wide? How big is God? How big is his universe? Oh, wow. <laughs> it's big, friend. It's big. You know what? If we were to get in our little spaceship, imaginary spaceship today and and we set it on cruise control for about 186,000 miles per second. Now, we're going to take a trip in the old gospel ship. And all I want to do, Brother Bishop, is visit the nearest star. I can't count with my naked eye how many stars there are up there. And all I want to do is visit the nearest. So I reckon I'll go 186,000 miles per second. I didn't say per hour. I said per second. Look at your neighbor and say, that's fast, Jack. That's fast. If I were to go around the world at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second, I'd go around the world seven times in one second. Faster than I make my hand go. I think I want to go on that airline. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Unbelievable. So I get in my spaceship and I, I'm going to blast off to go visit the nearest star. Seven, nine, eight, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition, blast off. Toom. I'm off to the nearest star. You know what? In two and a half seconds, I'd say bye bye to the moon. <laughs> the moon's only two and a half seconds away. At the speed of light. And the astronauts think they really done something. <laughs> you know, you got Brother John Wolfram coming here in a few weeks. Old John, he was, the, he was the top Navy SEAL in the U.S. Navy. He was the first man in the water to recover the Apollo 11 astronauts. He was the first man that saw the guys come back from the moon, give the thumbs up that they were okay after they come back down into the world, into the Earth's atmosphere. Hallelujah. It was a big deal. They're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the moon landing this year, 1969. I remember it well. Old men walking up there in the moon, and we're all like, Woo, Only the problem is that the moon's only two and a half seconds away. In eight minutes, I'd say bye-bye to the sun, 93 million miles away. Wow. 
Now I'm going to visit the nearest star. I'm going 186,000 miles per second. I go one day, I'm still not there. My God, every second that goes by, it's 186,000 miles. I'm only going to visit the nearest star. I go two days, I'm still not there. I go three days, I'm still not there. I go four days, I want my mama. <laughs> I mean, I didn't pack my lunch. I go a week, I'm still not there. I go two weeks, I'm still not there. I go a month, I'm still not there. I go one year, happy birthday to me. I'm only going to visit the nearest star. 186,000 miles per second. I go two years, I'm still not there. Hey, all I want to do is go visit the nearest star. I go three years, I'm still not there. I go four years, I'd finally reach the nearest star. 186,000 miles per second. For four years, I reached the nearest star. I don't think I want to go visit any more stars. <laughs> How high is high? How wide is wide? How big is God? He's eternal. There's no beginning. There's no ending. My God, I could take you out here on a cloudless night. And I could just say, see the Big Dipper up there? See that star? Right kind of at the bottom of the Big Dipper? That star is 2,000 light years away. And yet the star you're looking at tonight, the light was given off that star when Jesus was walking the shores of Galilee. And it's just now getting here at 186,000 miles per second for 2,000 years. And yet a star that's 2,000 light years away is a star that is comparatively near to our earth compared to all the other stars. There's stars out there that's millions of light years away, billions of light years away. I mean, it's like amazing. You know, and then when we get into this realm, our little finite minds can't grasp it. It's 186,000 miles per second. And scientists are trying to find the end of it all. They've been trying it forever. There are scientists out there in the big island of Hawaii. They're creating new and more powerful telescopes. They're peering further out into space. They already have confirmed there's a star that it's at least 38 billion light years away. So they're developing new and more powerful telescopes. They're peering further out into space. <laughs> what do they find? More stars. More galaxies. You can read in your paper periodically. They didn't just find another star. They found another galaxy. And the galaxy has hundreds of millions of stars in it. They didn't know previously existed. Oh my God. Where does it all come from? How did it all get there? The fool in his heart has said there is no God. Because what these people with so many PhDs behind their name will try to get you to believe is that it all just happened. It all just happened. They'll say that for billions of years, molecules and atoms, wherever they came from, have been having a party. Molecules and atoms, billions of years have been dancing. And they dance into this form and this form. And they, they dance into this ga gassy star. And then they dance into this and they dance into that. And they dance into the little comets with little tails behind them. And they dance into, oh, finally, they got real happy when they got near us. They danced into our solar system. They danced into Mercury. They danced into Venus. They danced into Mars. They danced into Saturn. They stayed there for a while and made the little rings. They danced into J Jupiter and Pluto and Uranus and, and Neptune. And when they got to the Earth, they really played around, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Those molecules and atoms just kept dancing. They danced into 
H two O. Life. Yeah. And then they danced into little creepy insects and little creepy animals. And they danced into little furry ones. And then they danced into giraffes with big long necks. They danced into elephants and rhinoceroses. They danced into flowers and with all the different colors. They danced into trees, elm trees, oak trees, spruce trees, pine trees. They just danced. No intelligent design. No. Till finally they danced into me. I want you to know that I am the product of molecules and atoms gone amok. <laughs> Don't blame me for how I look. Blame those there are molecules and atoms. They made a huge mistake. They danced into my eyes and the retinas and all that stuff. And just knew what to do. They danced into my kidneys and my heart. They danced into blood. Yeah. And they kept dancing until every person in the world they danced into has its own DNA. That's why we got fingerprints and ain't none of them alike. Even though they look alike. No God! Oh, my Lord. Anybody here getting the picture? And yet you got these smart people in these universities teaching mush-headed students. Oh, they, they, they use a whole lot better language. And I, all this really intelligent language to explain that there ain't no God. But I'm going to boil it down into just so you understand what they're saying. Once I was a monkey swinging in a tree. Now I'm a doctor with a Ph.D. Hey, don't you buy it. I didn't come from no monkey. I didn't come from no ape. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made in the image and the likeness of God I am. Oh, come on, somebody. Clap your hands. You're a product of the hand of the God who is forever. And you can't find the end of his universe. Oh, hallelujah. You know what? They look at us and say we're stupid because we believe in a creative God. Yeah. Now I ask you who's stupid. I ask you who is a fool. You know, when you don't believe in God, you don't have any absolutes. You can't get anything right. I mean, nothing adds up. You know, they tell us we came from monkeys. They tell us we just happened. We tell us molecules. They tell us all this kind of stuff. And then they change their tune every week. I picked up a Time magazine several years ago, and I don't know, I lost it. I kept it for a while, but I don't know where it's at now. But the, top, the, the cover was these hideous-looking sea urchins, you know, ugly-looking things from the sea. And the article was that this is where we all came from. We came from the sea. So now we came from the sea. Huh. And there was a sentence in that article that said, Tiny sea urchins in vast oceans dreamed of growing large. Now, you look at the little sea urchin, and you look at him and say, he has a dream. He's not always going to be a, he's not only going to be a little, a fish in water, but he's going to be a fish out of water. <laughs> fish out of water. <laughs> You ever heard that term, I feel like a fish out of water? Well, what they say is, the little fish had a dream. He wasn't like all the other little fishies. 
He was a Martin Luther fishy. He had a dream. So he swims down under a rock. He goes to sleep, the little fishy does. He has a dream. Oh, I'm not always going to be a fishy down here because I got a dream that I'm not always going to be this little fishy. And so he wakes up, and he, because he has a dream, he swims kind of to the surface of the water. And then he keeps swimming. And he swims until he sees the, you know, the land. He says, wow, this is my chance. And so he swims, and he gets up on the land. And when he lands on the land, he goes, a wave comes and catches him and gets back in. He keeps doing that. He keeps doing that. He did that for a long time. Till finally, he learned to be a fish out of water. Now he's on the land. He learned how to breathe. Now he's no longer a fish. Now he's a turtle. <laughs> you think I'm joking? Go read it. That's what, that's what the smart people who are fools believe. And the turtle, he just kept, they believe in this evolving, evolution. Things just kept evolving and evolving and evolving. Until finally, we got to the monkey who acts a lot like me. And I've been to the zoo and I'm like, oh boy. I mean, he does a lot of things just like me. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you look like my grandpappy. Grand you really do. Except they say there's a missing link. Hmm. We got a missing link. Something just doesn't connect. Well, if one link's missing, they're all missing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Didn't come from no monkey. Didn't come from no ape. Didn't come from no sea urchin. Oh, hallelujah. I come from the Lord my God. I think you need to thank God for who you are. And that he created you in his image and his likeness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon. Oh, come on now. And God breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Somebody ought to shout a little bit. We're different from the animals. We talk. We walk. We think. We can analyze. We are created in the image and the likeness of God we are. Hallelujah. And somebody ought to shout a little. Praise God. Go ahead and praise Him. He's worthy to be praised. You know, human beings are the only, the only thing that God's created that can really worship. We were created to worship. Hallelujah. I know some people say, oh, my dog worships me. No, he doesn't. He worships the food you give him. I mean, he just wants a treat, treat. <laughs> Sit up, you get a treat. <laughs> Roll over, you get a treat. Treat. You don't have to do that to, to me. I like food, but uh, you ain't going to get me to do it for a treat. I never did go down the road and see a herd of cows in the field and they're all on their hoofs. Oh, moody you, moody you. I've never seen that. That cow don't know where he came from. Hallelujah. When I come into an atmosphere like this, into this Norfolk Apostolic Church, you think this place just happened? You think, Brother Bishop, that this church here is a product of molecules and atoms? Just kind of gone amok, so I think we'll form an, a Norfolk Apostolic Church. No, it didn't happen that way. I know a God who robed himself in flesh. 
Hallelujah. And came and walked among men. And he went and he died on a cross. Hallelujah. And he shed his blood. And now I can have salvation. I was born in sin because I rejected God. That's what Adam and Eve did. And we've been living in that sin for how long? But he created the way of escape. Hallelujah. Because he created us because he didn't want to be alone. He wanted to have a bride. He wanted to have a people that would love him. That he could have a relationship with. And that's why we're here today. You might think you were born to do all the stuff that's in the world. I hope you have a good time for the next few years and that you enjoy all what you do what the world has to offer. But I'm here to tell you, scientists will have to agree with this. It's appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. You better get it right because this life is just a dressing room for the great life to come. You better get to know this Jesus that created you. Hallelujah. For a purpose. There's a divine purpose for every life. Oh, come on, somebody. Somebody praise him. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. There's nobody like my God. Oh, come on, let's worship him. He inhabits the praises of his people. He loves us, and we love him. It's a relationship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, I love it. I mean, I know this sounds real elementary stuff. We're supposed to know this, but most of the world don't know it. Or they reject it. Or they reject us as the fools. And we're the only ones who got our heads screwed on right. <laughs> we, know, we know where we come from, and we know where we're going. And we understand that in this life, there's going to be trial. There's going to be test. There's going to be situations because he himself said it. But he said, you know, this life really is a dressing room. We are preparing ourselves. Amen. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Hallelujah. And just as there is no beginning and no ending to our God, and just as there is no beginning and no ending to his universe, hallelujah, there is no beginning or ending to our lives. We have eternal life, my friend, because everybody that has been created is going to have eternal life somewhere. Hallelujah. I'm just glad I have salvation. I'm just glad that the blood has been applied to my life. I'm just glad that I've repented. I'm glad that I've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. I'm just glad that I have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. I'm just glad that I have a heavenly Father that watches over me, that's with me every day of the week, every moment of the day, every breath that I take. Somebody ought to praise Him right now for what he's done in your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen when you get to heaven? You know, heaven's a real place. Thank you for that rousing response. I said heaven is a real place. You know, I found out that over the last several years, it's, a lot of people don't think about heaven that much. They got heaven here. We're tied to the earth earthy. We like our house. We like our car. We, we love how things are going. We love to do this, love to do that, and we're having a good time. And ain't nothing wrong with that, but I'm, I'm sad to tell you, friend, but this ain't all there is. This world is not heaven. This earth is not heaven. I remember when I was younger, we used to have a lot of preaching about heaven. We used to sing about heaven. We used to, I'd go, I'd go home at night and I'd lay on my bed and say, oh my, the Lord could come tomorrow. I remember thinking, oh boy, man, if the Lord comes, I, I, ain't, give a, I ain't never going to be married. 
man, if the Lord comes, he's going he gonna to cramp my style. I mean, I'm not going to be able to do all these things that I'm thinking I can do in this world. Praise God. Well, we don't sing about it that much more. We don't preach about it as much. At least the places I've been, I hadn't heard it much. We ought to be, we ought to be thinking about heaven. We ought to be preaching about heaven. We ought to be, we ought to be thanking God because, hallelujah, this ain't all you get. <laughs> hallelujah. I'm on my way to heaven. And do you know what happens when you get to heaven? Everything there is eternal. Can you imagine going to a place of eternal love? No hate. Are you kidding me? No, no hate. Love. Because he's love. And ain't no hate going there. No potential to hate there. Oh, you got that potential here. <laughs> you don't got that potential there. It's going to be a place of eternal love. It's going to be a place of eternal joy. Look at your neighbor and say, don't look so glum, chum. You're going to the place of eternal joy. You see, that's why we have joy in our hearts. It's different than happiness. Happiness is based on happenstance. If everything's going all right, we're happy. Happy, happy, happy. When something goes wrong, no, no, no. But joy, hallelujah, is internal, not external. Praise God. When you get the Holy Ghost, He gives you the fruit of the Spirit. And He puts joy in you. And it don't matter what comes along, what test, no trial. That joy is internal. Hallelujah. So you don't respond like the folks on the outside. They don't have any other way to respond. But we respond on the inside because we know we're on our way to the place of eternal joy. And he gives us a little heaven to go to heaven in. That's what the Holy Ghost is. It's a little heaven to go to heaven in. Yes! Eternal joy! Oh my God, I can't... I can't hardly stand this, you know. I, here I am, man. I'm getting in my senior years now. I've been plodding through this life a long time already. You know, I don't know if I'll stay here as long as my grandpa did. He was 97. But then I got other grandparents and uncles and stuff that died about my age and some of them earlier, so... I know I'm getting about there. Hallelujah. Don't weep for me. You know, there's that song, don't weep for me when I'm gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I hope at my funeral, if the Lord don't come first and take me, I hope at my funeral the people are dancing and shouting and praising God. Why should y'all be standing around my... Cassius, oh, he was a good old boy. I don't know if we can stand not having him around no more. And then others will probably be happy because I'm gone. Wow, we won't have to put up with him no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, man. If we really do believe absent from the body is present with the Lord... Why would you come and cry at my funeral? Some of you are looking at me like I don't know what, what you're looking at me. And some of you are looking like, hallelujah, do we believe this stuff or we don't believe this stuff? Hallelujah, I don't want to stay here with all, you know, I ain't going to name names or nothing. But I'll tell you what, this, this nation and the one I come from in Canada, they've gone stark raving nuts, man. I don't want to hang around with them. Praise God. But I do believe that just before the Lord comes back, he, gon', he ain't going to leave us in just a total mess. Amen. He's building his church. That's what he's doing. And if you think this is all there is, guess again. 
Hallelujah. As the Lord tarries, there's going to be a whole lot of those fools that are going to, they're, they're, they're going to finally wake up. Hey, we've been fools. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they're going to come in and they're going to get the same thing you got and I got because we used to be fools, but we're not fools anymore. We got the Lord Jesus Christ living on the inside of us and we've got a hope and a future beyond this old life. <laughs> Praise God, and we ought to praise God for it. Hallelujah. How big is God? How high is high? How wide is wide? How big is God? I'll tell you one thing. He's bigger than all my problems. He's bigger than anything. He's bigger than uh, anything that you're going through. You've got to understand that today. He's bigger. He's bigger than cancer. He's bigger than heart disease. He's bigger than any problem you're going through. He's bigger than all of that. Hallelujah. I've I got to get you to believe it again this morning. My God is bigger. My God is not Buddha. My God is not Confucius. My God is not some statue sitting in a corner. My God is alive. My my God is great. My God is greatly to be praised. He's the only wise God that's blessed forever. There is no Savior beside Him. He's God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's everybody stand up together. I think it would be a good thing right now before we do anything else. Everybody here that knows anything about God and anybody here that wants to know anything about God, I think you ought to raise your hands to the Lord right now and begin to praise Him because you've got a revelation that our God is bigger than our problems. Our God is bigger than anything. Our God is bigger than what we're going through right now. My God is bigger. Oh, hallelujah. And because my God is bigger, He's the healer. He's the deliverer. He's the one that sets us free. Hallelujah. He's the one that speaks to us in the middle of the night. Hallelujah. He's the God that gives us joy in the midst of sorrow and peace in the midst of chaos. He's that God. Come on, praise Him. Praise Him. Come on, let the church be filled with the praise and the glory to our God. He's bigger. He's bigger. He's bigger. Now go ahead and applaud him. Go ahead and applaud him. Go ahead and praise him like he ought to be praised. Come on, let there be a shout. Let there be a shout of praise to our God. He's bigger. He's bigger. He's bigger than anything. Hallelujah. 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 Now, Lord, give us all a revelation if we haven't already received it. Amen. That we're in the world, but we're, done, we're not of it. Hallelujah. We're just walking through this world. Hallelujah. Children of the Most High God. Kings of the... Hello, He's the King and we're, the, we're His children. Hallelujah. And He's preparing us. He's right there beside us. Hallelujah. The angels of the Lord encamp around and about us. Hallelujah. He was there all the time. Praise God. I'm praying for these dear people here today, Lord, that you'd bless them as you've already blessed them, but Lord, bless them more abundantly. We were singing earlier, Lord, about the great Jehovah Jireh. Lord, I hope we know that that was just not words coming off of our lips. But I pray, oh God, that as we sung it, we were singing it from our hearts. Our God is the great Jehovah Jireh. That means he's our provider. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Some men trust in horses and in chariots and the things of this world, but we will remember the name of the Lord God of hosts. There's nobody like him. Hallelujah. 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 I'll give glory to that God. Give us a revival of the revelation of joy. Give us a revival of the revelation of peace. Give us a revival of the revelation of the love of God. Oh, hallelujah. May we go out of this place rejoicing. Rejoicing and praising in our great God. 
Oh, I'm glad, Lord, that you found me. Praise God. Now I'm going to ask everybody that would, would like to is to just make an effort. Just move out of your place and, and just come up to this altar. I, I want you to know that everybody in here didn't just start off this way. We were all sinners. We were all out there. Some of us were drug addicts. Some of us were hopelessly lost. Some of us were lost and undone. We'd lost our way. We didn't know who was God. We didn't know what to believe. We had all kinds of questions in our minds because there's so many religions and all that. You're in a church that's not a religion. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. This church is an experience. <laughs> this church is the experience. <laughs> we have an experience with Almighty God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Once we were lost, now we're found. <laughs> Once we're blind, now we can see. <laughs> Once we were dead, now we're alive. <laughs> can I get a witness in the house? <laughs> I was lost, but you found me. <laughs> I was lost, but you found me. <laughs> I was blind, but now I see. Oh, yes. Nobody. Nobody. Like Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, before the, before the folks start singing, and we get that greater atmosphere of worship going, everybody that's at this altar, you know who you are. You know what kind of a relationship you have with the God of the universe we've been talking about today. There's nobody here by accident. You're here by divine appointment. Hallelujah. This isn't an accident. God leads. He leads. He draws people by His Spirit. And so we're all here together, and He's given us all an opportunity to respond to the great Word of God, to respond to His call. Hallelujah. To ask Him. Lord, see, the, the Lord is a God that made us as a free will moral agent with the power of choice. He doesn't force any of us to do anything. So don't worry. God's not going to just pick you up and throw you on the floor. Amen. God's not that kind of a God. He just says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. Come to me, and I will give you. I'll pour my life into you so that you don't have to struggle on your own through this life. Hallelujah. But I'm going to go right with you. Hallelujah. And if you experience salvation at this altar, hallelujah, you're going to go away from this place thanking God. Uh, this is a new day, Dawn. And when you go out of here, you're going to say, this is a brand new day. This is the first day of the rest of my life. I'm going to give it to you. Hallelujah. The rest of my days, I'm going to dedicate and consecrate my life to the God that created me. And I'm not going to live on my own anymore. I'm going to trust in my God. Yes, I'm going to do it. That's what I'm going to do. So while we're singing and worshiping right where you are, why don't you just give yourself to the Lord right now? Hallelujah. And let's just worship Him and praise Him together. Come on now, everybody in the house. Move upon us this day. Go ahead, you can pray for one another. Pray for one another. That's all right. Hallelujah. Those of you that know the Lord, minister to somebody. Worship the Lord together. God's going to perform a miracle. Here's what I want you to do. Amen. Those of you that know the Lord, you're worshiping and praising. Why don't you just gently begin to move a little bit? Hallelujah. See somebody that you just want to minister to gently. I mean, not laying hands like that, but hallelujah, just encouraging one another in the Lord. And if somebody here just needs, needs something from the Lord that maybe they don't have yet, hallelujah, you can... You can exercise your faith so that they can believe like you believe. And they can start a brand new life. So why don't we just move around and exercise our faith? Hallelujah. As the singers sing, come on, let's just do that. And minister to one another in the Lord. Let's do it. Come on. Let's just move around. That's right. Come on. Walk God and the Father. He's God in the Son. He's God in the Holy Ghost. All these three are holy.
worship him. Just minister to one another. Just let the Holy Ghost flow like oil here for a little bit.
close your eyes where you are and just worship him. Just love his name. He is our creator. This is the touch of another kingdom. Oh, Jesus, sweep through this place. Sweep through this place.
It's been almost 44 years. The month of May. 1975. I was a 13-year-old teenager. And it was earlier in the spring. That, yeah, that was when I was baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. But the, uh, slightly earlier than that, probably April or so, I remember attending an apostolic church for the first time in my life as a 13-year-old. Couldn't explain what was going on. Matter of fact, I thought, this is, this is kind of crazy. <laughs> But there was, there was one thing that I had a problem with, and that is, it's what I felt. And I want to tell you why you feel something here that's different, even though you can't explain it. By the way, not being able to explain everything is not a bad thing. Because if you can go to a church where you can explain everything, then there isn't much happening. I want to be part of a kingdom that is bigger than me. God does stuff that still mystifies my mind at times. But that said, I was I noticed something. And, and if you want to know what it is, by the way, it's because you're feeling the, the sense of another kingdom. We are not just flesh and blood, but we've been created as spiritual beings as well. And there is an entire spiritual world that was going on around us. And you begin to feel that. And, and it, was that, it was that sense of I've never felt that anywhere before. I want to explore that more. And all of a sudden, I blinked. And here it is 44 years later, and I'm still here. So I'm just saying, don't just dismiss what you feel say, God, I want to explore this just a little more. I want to see if I can. I, I understand things about the kingdom today. I didn't even begin to understand back then. But the feeling is still the same. It's that draw. It's the love of God. It's the presence of God, the spirit of God. And I don't want to ever have church without it. Amen. Hallelujah. Greet one another. Love one another in the name of the Lord. Dismiss the day in the name of the Lord, but tonight let's be faithful, filled.